What's going on everybody? Welcome back. My name is Unvid Entertainment Gaming and welcome back to another episode of this week's fan mail of the week everybody. I really hope you guys had a fantastic week. Although it's been cold as shit lately. Of course we are in smack dab in the middle of January. The Royal Rumble's coming up and I cannot fucking wait for that. But aside from that, uh, my birthday actually, speaking of Royal Rumbles, was a Royal Rumble. I actually wrestled on my birthday uh, both on the 9th, the 10th, and the the 11th um and the 11th was on my actual birthday so um just a quick little time out um for those of you out there who did wish me a happy birthday i really do thank you guys a lot truly you didn't have to do that but um just a, a lot of you know good vibes a lot of happy birthdays a lot of you know uh, heartwarming stuff, and I just wanted to say thank all of you for that, all of you, all of you, all of you, even the haters who hate me for some weird reason, uh, thank you <laughs> for uh, even sticking around, I guess you could say, um, but uh, it, it's just been a really fucking, like, weird week, like, yeah, like, I wrestled on my birthday, I couldn't spend it with my friends, I couldn't do anything, actually, um, and then I come back, and it's like the apocalypse here, it's like fucking frigid cold, it's like raining, snowing, <sighs> it, it's not like the best of ways to start off a week, but uh, of course it is Friday, thank god, it's fucking, oh god, I, I could not stand the week, honestly, it's just been such a miserable week, training has been miserable, everything has been miserable so far, but anyways everybody, before we begin, um, I really hope you guys take a minute to go on ahead and check out my second channel, uh, the link will be in the comment section below, at Unreal ENT Network, on there you're gonna find some really awesome stuff from me and my friends that you won't find on here, topics, discussions, debates, what if battles, walkthroughs, and a whole bunch of awesome stuff, um, just to give you guys a quick little heads up. Up on that so without any fucking time being wasted i am cold right now i'm gonna be shivering throughout this entire fan mail all right let's begin with our first question of the week which is from new wake order very interesting name by the way Hey, Alex, I hope this message makes it to your fan mail, dude. Last week's episode was awesome, bro. Your content is funny and great. Thank you, man. I, I truly appreciate that. Uh, the things you and Edgar say on Unreal ENT Network is also amazing. Thank you, man. Sometimes we bump heads on there. It, it's really funny, actually, but it is what it is. He has his opinions. I have mine. So anyways, let's begin. Question number one, God Cell versus God Goku, who would win? <laughs> okay. Question two, do you think Gogeta will ever be brought back in a Dragon Ball Z movie or series? Question three, do you think porno will ever be played out? Question four, thoughts on a possible 2015 martial law effect in America? All right, well, given the fact that we're using the whole God Frieza thing, to answer your first question, if Cell were to be brought back and if Cell was able to become a god and he battled uh, Super Saiyan God Goku, um, that would be a very interesting fight. Uh, shit, I, I really don't know on this one. Um, I mean, I would say Cell, but Goku has improved in technique so much. And the fact that he's being trained by Beerus and Whis, I mean, that gives him even more knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more powerful you are, because if you have knowledge over your enemy, you're bound to fucking take him out easily. It's not really that hard to, like, you know, combat your enemy when you're more knowledgeable than them and just put him into the ground. Um, but if, if Cell became a god and he became, like, this, you know, organic being of, like, this, you know, super cell android, you know, like, like, that, that, that's what I could see Cell becoming, like, a super cell, like, something really out of the norm, you know, um, but if Goku battled Cell again, just as the Z fighters are battling Frieza for the upcoming movie, I think the winner would be God Goku, perhaps, um, remember, Goku has a lot of techniques that Cell does not even know yet, um, who knows if Cell even had his body in hell the whole time while he was down there, so, you know, the, uh, the thought of him even, you know, training the same, or even competing, or learning anything new, is, uh, up in arms, but I think Super Saiyan God Goku would be more than enough to handle him, um, given the fact they fought once more, I think Goku would not hold back this time, Goku would definitely unleash everything upon Cell, um, Cell would be so cool to see as a god, because obviously he would have another evolution, he would have a new form, maybe um and i think it'd be pretty cool to see if he still had his absorbing techniques because what if he was a, a, able to absorb another character while he was in hell or maybe while he's you know plaguing the universe once again uh, but for me i would have to say god goku and a lot of people underestimate god goku but uh I, I think god goku would be able to handle him just because of his techniques and his durability so 
Uh, to answer your second question, uh, Gogeta, well, uh, I mean, we all want to see fusions, man. I, I, you see, I don't know why people bash fusions. Um, there's this one guy by the name of Kenneth. He always talks about Vegito. I wish we see Vegito. Vegito would be great. Vegito would be a perfect fit. Yeah, Vegito would be great to see, man, but it's not going to happen. You're going to have to accept it. I already accepted it. And the only reason why they're not going to bring him back is because two reasons. Number one, it makes no sense to bring him back because um, they, they don't have the earrings anymore. They, they, they can't just wish for the earrings. Yeah, the Kais can make new earrings, but what are the odds of Vegeta, out of all people, asking Goku, like, hey, we need to do a permanent fusion? I, I, I can see more of a Gogeta than a Vegito because Vegeta made it perfectly clear that he does not want to stay glued with Goku. He does not want to be fused with Goku forever. Um, they got extremely lucky inside of Boo's body when they separated because nobody knew what the hell happened. Um, but it, like Vegeta, Vegeta does not want to fuse with Goku like that anymore. He t he he told Goku he was like, "Yo, yo, man, I I am not gonna be fucking stuck with you forever like that again." That was a one-time thing. We got lucky, and that was that. I mean, if anything, yeah, they could definitely use Gogeta because Gogeta can actually separate after an hour. So. Um, I, I would love to see Gogeta versus God Frieza. I would love to see uh, Gogeta versus, you know, Whis and Beerus. Um, the fusions haven't really been tested like that yet. That's the only reason why I would say, yeah, bring in Gogeta because I, I, I would love to see Gogeta and Vegito if, if it was ever possible. Um be tested I, I think these characters need to be tested and, and, and although a lot of people are going to say well the fusions stand no chance against the gods yeah sure that may be the case but what if the fusions became the gods then what you know it'll be a really awesome fight to see um but as for a new series uh here i, I don't know about that man i mean i really hope that there's going to be a new series um i, I don't know I, I i really i really don't know how to answer that because as much as we would all love to see Gogeta, it's just not going to be plausible. I mean, they're not going to make it happen. At least I don't think so, because with all the other characters that are surrounded in the film, there is no need for Gogeta, at least as of right now. Who knows? Anything can happen as of this point, so... Uh, to answer your fourth or third question, actually, do I think porno will ever get played out? Well, um... Think of porn real quick and think of men and women having sex. You know, um, sex is a thing that will never be played out. Sex is a thing that will never die out because we as human beings love sex. We as human beings crave sex. When a guy sees a hot girl, he gets really horny. He wants to bang her. When a girl sees a really hot guy, she gets wet. She wants to bang him. You know, um, that's just the art form of life. So, you know, pretty much when you're asking if porno will ever be played out, it's almost as if you're saying, will sex ever be played out? Sex will never be played out. Um, porno is something used to uh, stimulate people, to stimulate men and women. Um, but it's not good, I would say, because if you jerk off or you masturbate to porno a lot, you'll become asexual. And if you don't know what asexual means, go look it up. Um, when people pleasure themselves so much... And they're so adapted to that, they're not going to want to, you know, have sex with other people because they're the only ones that know how to hit that spot, if you know what I'm saying. So, um, I, I don't think porno will ever be played out. I do feel as if in the far future there are going to be, like, sex robots you can get and you can bang robots and all that. I, I don't know, like, there has to be some form in the future that will, uh radiate to, uh, physical things rather than, you know, visual, visual visualization. Um, porno, it, it will always be around just because it's porno. Um, but I don't, I don't think it'll ever get played out, to be honest. Uh, the, the porn industry is making a lot of money. Um, and uh, for that matter, yeah, people are getting diseases in there, which is not cool. Um, but I, I don't think it'll ever get played out. It's, it's making too much money, and uh, people are far too interested in that to even like let it go. So, and uh, to answer your, uh, Last question, the possible 2015 martial law effect. Okay, I I'm going to make this perfectly clear, and I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. Okay, so the the Garner incident, the uh, Brown incident, the um, Trayvon Martin incident. These cops are going around killing people, beating people, and they're not being punished for it. These law enforcement officers that are going around shooting people, 
punching people, choking people, abusing people. They're not getting indicted. They're not getting, uh, you know, like the punishment that they need. Why is that? Why is that? It's because the law has their back. The governments, the judicial system, they have the law enforcement's back because at the end of the day, who's really protecting the nation? Is it the citizens or is it the officers? Yeah, the officer may do something wrong, but, you know, the, these judicial systems are always often going to look out for what's best in their interest. Um, it's, it, it's just fucked up. It's fucked up how um, these uh, white cops are shooting all these black people and there are there are even some black cops that are killing black people like what the hell is going on um there have been cases where cops have killed white people but it, it, they 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 never blew it up as if it's like something important um and and it should be important because uh what these cops are doing to uh black people to white people to asian people to pregnant women which is fucked up is wrong um martial law will be in effect because with all of these protesters standing up for their human rights, um, the law enforcement see that as a credible threat and they want to obviously protect themselves and their best interests. So what are they going to do? They're just going to fucking enforce martial law, man. And they're going to keep everybody subdued within like a certain frame, within a certain time. And, you know, and it's, it's going to affect the world. Um, the shit that's going on right now, guys, it is not cool whatsoever. I mean, and my question is, if you're a fucking cop, bro, why are you taking advantage of that fucking badge? You have a gun, you have pepper spray, you have handcuffs, you have a knife stick, you have a taser, you have weapons. Civilians don't have weapons. Why are we militarizing our, our fucking police? You're not the fucking military. If, if you wanted to go around beating people up and killing people, go join the fucking service and go overseas and protect our country from the real enemy. Not from fucking people that are walking in and out of stores or walking the streets or telling you to go fuck off. It, 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 it's, it's within our rights to walk as we please and do as we want until proven guilty. Whatever happened to that shit? Um, I, for one, don't feel safe when I see cops. Um, but when have I ever had to feel safe or when there were cops around? Um, cops are taking advantage. It's not cool. It's wrong. And I do feel as if uh, there will be a martial law that will come about. It may not be this year, perhaps. It may be in 2016, 17. But they're pushing for that agenda. So anybody in here who's watching this, do not. Do not try to piss the cops off. Go about your daily life. If they ask you questions, just cooperate. But don't don't try to start a fight that you know you can't win. Because God forbid, one of you guys in here gets harassed. Cops fuck with you. You fire back. Cops fucking kill you. You know they're they're not gonna they're gonna walk at the end of the day. You're not. You're gonna be dead. So um, it, it, it's a very fucked up thing. But uh, it's just like that, that. That's a totally different subject from now, honestly, because um, th there's just a lot you can talk about, and there's not enough time. But uh, martial law is coming, and I hope you guys prepare for that shit because it is not gonna be fun. Uh, but anyways, my friend, I thank you for the questions, and I hope you have a wonderful and very warm week, my friend. And now moving on to the next question, which is from David. Alex, just one question, bro. Thoughts on CM Punk and him signing to UFC? Okay, um, to answer that, all right, uh, CM Punk had a podcast interview with Colt Cabana, um, and CM Punk was complaining about his health. He was complaining how, um, you know, the WWE made him work so much and he had a staph infection and Ryback pretty much broke his ribs and Ryback would, you know, break the guy down. He had knee surgery, all of the hits he's been taking, every, all the stress on his body. And then he goes on to join the UFC, a place where it's, I, I feel as if far more physical than WWE in terms of like what you're gonna do in the inside of that ring, um, so for me it, it's just it, it's it's hypocrisy. Why would you complain about your health in the WWE and having to work all these days and having to bitch about you know jobbing out to part timers and stuff like that? But meanwhile, you're going into the UFC to get your ass kicked. What if you get your ribs broken again? You, you, you're gonna make another interview talking about how oh yeah well uh you know. Fucking Ryback broke my ribs in WWE, and uh, Chael Sonnen broke my ribs in uh, UFC. It's like, dude, 
stop bitching. I mean, yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a good move on CM Punk's part because it increases his uh, his net worth. It increases his value as a performer. Um, of course, CM Punk is doing this for money. Um, I mean, why else wouldn't he? I mean, he's also working for Marvel. So it's like, is that not cutting out for him? It, does he not like working for Marvel as much as he want to do other things? Yeah, sure. If he wants to do UFC and Marvel, you know, fucking all the praise to him. Good luck for CM Punk, a.k.a. Phil Brooks. Um, but for me, it's like... Why would you deliberately bash a company that's given you everything that you have right now, including a, pl a platform to transition on over to the UFC, and, and then you're just complaining about how things didn't go your way? Um, I like CM Punk. I think he is a decent wrestler. I think he is a great promo cutter. Um, when it comes to him being in the ring, uh, I think he's okay when I think of him getting into the UFC, I think that that's a very terrible decision. The guy is going to be, what, 37 this year when, when he fights? And uh, he's going to get his fucking ass kicked. And, and here's the thing, guys. CM Punk is going to win his first fight. Mark my words on that. He's going to win his first fight because the company, the uh, UFC franchise, is going to do everything they can to protect their asset, which is CM Punk. They're going to protect Punk and they're, they're, they're going to give Punk somebody, you know, either on their way out or somebody that's just scrubby. And they're going to protect his assets as a fighter because they want the buy rates for their pay-per-views. They want the buy rates for all that shit. And CM Punk is going to be the cash cow for that company. Um, so, yeah, it makes sense for them to give Punk somebody like scrubby or somebody who's just like on their way out or somebody who's past their prime because they want to see CM Punk win. They want to see CM Punk, um, you know, build that reputation so that he can bring in more fans and more money. It's a business, guys. I mean, we all have to understand that. We all have to, you know, come across the grips that, yeah, even though what they're doing right now may not, you know, seem, I, I, I guess you could say plausible, they're going to do everything they can to protect CM Punk, to be honest. So, um, CM Punk was talking about how uh, WWE did this and WWE did that. But meanwhile, he, he was taking Vince's private jet to go to California for a wedding and back. And, and he, he was offered these luxuries. When you're offered luxuries like that, dude, be fucking humble. Don't be a dick. I, I, that, that, is something, that is something that I absolutely hate. I hate people that are just so oblivious to their own action as if they feel entitled to be rulers of the world, you know, and, and that's exactly what CM Punk thought he, he, he could fucking do, he's like, run the WWE, it's like, I want the main event of WrestleMania, I want this, I want that, it's like, how about you just shut the fuck up and just do as you're told, dude, you're in this, you're in this company for a reason, and um, if it wasn't for this company, you probably would have been in Ring of Honor right now, not bashing Ring of Honor, but you would have been in Ring of Honor or probably not wrestling at all. Um, CM Punk, he had a lot going on. Um, he's made a lot of money. He's made millions. Good for him. Uh, but by him having to bash WWE on health hazards, but then stepping into the ring, stepping into the octagon in the UFC, it, it's, it's just like, wow, you're a hypocrite. You're such a hypocrite. And you know what? CM Punk's probably like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, you probably don't, but uh, your reputation goes down even though your value goes up. You're still going to be known as a scumbag. I mean, is he a cool guy? I'm sure he is. But uh, him signing to the UFC, all I got to say is I can't wait to watch him fight because one of two things are going to happen. Either he's going to do relatively well or he's going to get his fucking ass kicked. So... But anyways, Mr. David, thank you for the questions, my friend, and I hope you have a very wonderful day, my friend. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Elizabeth Farwell. Yo, what's up, bro? <laughs> I have a few movie questions for you, and I would love to hear your take on. Question number one, do you think Insidious 3 will be any better than the second? Question number two, did you hear that the Day of the Dead is getting a remake? What are your thoughts? No, I did not know that. Wow, holy shit. Uh, question three, with the new Dragon Ball Z movie drop, this April, when will we see an English dub? Question four, what are your thoughts on Jurassic World's new hybrid dinosaur? Well, thank you for the questions, Mrs. Elizabeth. Well, to answer your first question, Insidious 3. Now, I loved Insidious uh, 2. I hated Insidious 1. Insidious 1, to me, was just a giant joke. Um, you know, they had, like, this demon-like figure who pretty much 
look like a rehashed clown person. It was just so stupid. Um, Insidious 1 was not as scary as uh, a lot of people said it was. Um, I thought other movies were a lot more terrifying than that, like The Conjuring. Um, but Insidious 1 was just, man, it wasn't all that good. Um, it took a lot for my friend Omar to drag me out so we can go see uh, Insidious 2. So when I finally saw Insidious 2, I was like, this movie is really, really good. Like, I, I was really impressed with Insidious 2. I was really impressed with, with, with what they brought to the table. Um, so for Insidious 3, after watching the, uh, the trailer to it, I was very impressed. I was like, okay. Especially the beginning when the girl's texting and she's like, um, hey, am I keeping you up? And the guy's like, well, I'm not even home. And like, so whoever was knocking on her wall on the other side of the fucking wall wasn't really the guy that she was texting. It was something else. Somebody else. I mean, she didn't even know. And that right there was terrifying. So... There are a lot of uh, preludes to the first movie, including that the demon might be back. Um, if the demon is back from the first film, honestly, I don't see how that's going to work. Um, although at the ending of the second Insidious film, the, uh, the actual you know ghost lady was just like, oh my god, and then she gasped for air, and that was it, like the ending of the film just like cut. So um, Insidious 3, I think it will be good. It will follow up to the second film. Um... It may not be the last chapter because if it were, if it was the last chapter, um, they would have had like some sort of ending title, like you know, the final chapter, Insidious Three. But it's not going to be the last chapter. They're going to make an Insidious Four and possibly an Insidious Five and Six and Seven, or who knows. Uh, but yeah, I I do think Insidious Three is going to be good. Um, I believe it comes out this May. So I mean, there's so many movies coming out this year. It's absolutely awesome. I mean, the movies towards the ending of 2014 were awesome as well. Um, I saw Ouija, I saw Interstellar, which was amazing, I saw Fury, you know, so these movies were fucking phenomenal, um, but yeah, Insidious 3, I feel as if it's going to be a very good horror movie, of course, we have Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimensions coming out in March, and then we have Insidious coming out in May, so that ought to really spice things up a bit, I mean, there are a lot of horror movies coming out this year, so... But I think it'll be better than the second film. It has to. If not, I'll be pissed. Uh, to answer your second question, no, I did not know that there was going to be a Day of the Dead remake. Um, I really hope that it follows up to Dawn of the Dead's remake, um, even though it will probably not. Uh, that th This is exactly what we're missing. We're missing zombie films, damn it. Um, we had World War Z. We had all these films. But now, I mean, it's time for the, the, the zombie franchise to finally up it up. Um, there was a giant rumor that uh, Dead Rising, the movie, will be coming out uh, this year as well. Um, which is going to be pretty fucking cool to see. Because uh, if Dead Rising actually had a film, I really hope that it's good, number one. And then for number two, I really hope that uh, it, it delivers on a zombie aspect. But um, Day of the Dead. The uh, Day of the Dead 2008 remake was shit. Um, you had all of these fucking hybrid zombies running around, you know, jumping out of fucking windows and like landing on their face and then getting up and then running after you and stuff like that. Yeah, it's terrifying, but then, then you had Nick Cannon as like one of your main characters and it was just shit. I was like, this, this movie's fucking crap. So, Day of the Dead coming out, um, <clears throat> I'm very excited about it, number one. Fuck, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> I'm being infected by the fucking rage virus. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel as if like... I don't know, for Day of the Dead, I really hope that it gets a theatrical release rather than a DVD release, because any movie that gets released on DVD, guys, it sucks. We all know it sucks. Um, so for this film, I, as of right now, I have very fucking high hopes of this film. Um, if it doesn't deliver, I will be pissed. I will piss in somebody's fucking turkey. Um, but uh, honestly, I really hope that they continue off of Dawn of the Dead, because Dawn of the Dead told a very immersive story. Um, especially the remake, so if this follows up to that, it'll be a fucking wonderful year for me. Um, to answer your third film, Dragon Ball Z needs to come out with an English dub this year, for fuck's sakes, like, Christmas time or something, like, they have enough time, right? I mean, what irks me is the fact that, yeah, the movie comes out April 18th, and... I mean, come on, we're all looking forward to that shit. Frieza, Beerus, Whis, Vegeta, Goku, Gohan, Goten, Trunks, new new fucking villains, the, the Frieza army, new gods. It's going to be fucking awesome. Um, 
For an English dub, realistically, guys, I'm looking at 2016. As much as it sucks, I am looking at 2016. Although, logically, it would make sense for the dub to come out this December. Just like Star Wars. Um, and have Dragon Ball Z come out you know, just nationally and internationally in every theater rather than have it, you know, be dubbed in, like, specific theaters, which was so fucking stupid. Um, but if Dragon Ball Z gets the dub by this year, I really hope that it comes out this year, and I really hope that they follow up through with, uh, you know, releasing it in every theater. That way, me and my friends can go and watch it, and that way the franchise can gain more money out of it. I mean, if these people want money, what, why not release it this year and, you know, have national exposure? And, and then you have Xenoverse coming out, like, in a couple of weeks. Um, you have the new movie, and you're going to have a new dub. Like, that. that's incredibly awesome. And then hopefully, you know, after the dub comes out, Akira Toriyama can be like, all right, fuckers, Merry Christmas. Here's a new series. Goodbye. And, and I, that, that'll be amazing, you know? Um, but uh, for the movie dropping in April, will we see an English dub? We, we, we will see an English dub. But the question lingers on 2015 or 2016, sadly. Oh, man, I want the dub so bad. Um, and to answer your final question, my thoughts on the new Jurassic World hybrid dinosaur that's supposed to be attacking everybody. From what I heard, they're supposed to be mixing the DNA of a Velociraptor T-Rex um, I believe, uh, a very specific arachnid creature, like a very specific spider and, uh, like a jellyfish monster or something like that. Um, if that's the case, then that's going to be one fucking vicious ass dinosaur. Um, I really want to see how it looks like. I really want to see how it will go about to eat everybody. If it does, um, I want to see this dinosaur eat a T-Rex. I want to see this dinosaur eat a fucking Megalodon or whatever the case may be. Um, my thoughts on it are, you know, I, I hope that they don't mess it up with the cliche storyline, the cliche, you know, backstory of everybody trying to run away from this fucking dinosaur or something like that. Um, because Jurassic World, I mean, it'll be the first Jurassic Park movie to come out in what fucking... 10, 20 years, 30 years, like, come on now, um, so I have high hopes, I love the trailer, especially with the, uh, that giant fucking creature that came out of the water, um, and ate that fucking shark, like, that was awesome, you know what I mean, so, um, I, I think that was a pliosaur, I'm not entirely sure, um, but yeah, that fucking pliosaur came out the water and just, like, gobbled up, like, that fucking 10-foot shark, and I was like, wow, that is awesome, so, um, I have high hopes, and, uh, I really hope that they don't mess this film up, because if they do, It'll make dinosaur movies seem like shit. And this is the only dinosaur movie that I am looking forward to this year, quite frankly. So, But anyways, Elizabeth, thank you for the questions, and I hope you have a very, very wonderful weekend, my friend. And now, moving on to the next question, which is from Fast Cars. These damn birds outside will not fucking stop chirping. Shut up! Damn it, man. Fucking birds outside. I don't know what they're doing. They're either mating and they're fighting for fucking peanuts. I don't know. Uh, what's up, Alex? My name is Kyle, and I hope this makes it to fan mail, dude. Anyways, here are my questions. Question number one. Do you think you would be honored to get in the ring uh, up with Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Dolph Ziggler, etc.? Question two. Thoughts on the CM Punk interview? Question number three. How would you describe a good person and a bad one? Well, uh, thank you for the questions, Kyle. To answer your first question, uh, do I think I would be honored? Absolutely. I I would be more than humbled and honored to be in the ring with uh, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, uh, John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, Randy Orton, Triple H, Sting. I, I would definitely be honored to be in the ring with any of them. Um, they're all workers that have succeeded in this business. And um, it, it, it's very rare to see that at times because... Um, me, myself, coming up, I know what it's like to see people struggle. I, myself, am struggling. So um, it, it, it would mean the world if I could even step into the ring with one of these guys because, number one, for me, it would be absolutely amazing because I, I would be living my dream to be in the ring with these guys because they're all, they're all on, on an international level. So um, absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, for me, being in the ring with them would be more than an honor. It would be a privilege and it would be a blessing. So... Um, to answer your second question, thoughts on the CM Punk interview? I actually got this question, I believe it was last week. Um, I will try to cut this down as short as I can. The CM Punk interview with Colt Cabana, CM Punk said everything he had to say. He was very genuine with what he was talking about, although he was 
very, very uh, contradictory with what he said. He was talking about, oh, well, uh, Ryback broke my ribs in WWE. But meanwhile, he goes off and signs with UFC. It's like, dude, come on. It's like, if you're bitching about your health, why would you want to step into an octagon and have your fucking brains beaten out? And then what happens if you do sustain like a, like a horrible injury? You're going to fucking bash UFC for the rest of your life. Um, Punk would be a great addition to UFC because of his uh, promo skills, because of his, uh, you know, mic work. I think the guy would be able to talk up a storm, and I do believe that CM Punk would be able to uh, tell a very good story with his words, you know. Um, his his Colt Cabana interviews, both of them, were just really awesome to hear. They were about four hours long total, so I actually sat there for four hours listening to them. Um and I actually saw the uh, Stone Cold uh, Vince McMahon interview on uh, Stone Cold's podcast, and that was pretty cool too. So I don't know. For me, CM Punk, uh, I, I guess you could say he fell off the bandwagon because if you if if people made you who he, who you are today, and if you obtained success through the people, why in the world are you still complaining? Why in the world are you bickering about things not going your way? There are a lot of things that don't go any of our ways. But uh, we still thrive and we still strive to, you know, become the best that we can be and utilize those moments for as much as we can because the dude's going to turn 37 years old. He's going to be fucking fighting in the octagon. Who the hell is his first opponent going to be? I really hope it's Jason David Frank from fucking Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the Green Ranger. And I hope fucking Jason David Frank beats the shit out of CM Punk. Although, like I said in my previous fan if you guys didn't hear, you guys can go on ahead and check it out. Um, CM Punk will be protected. And he won't be given anybody over the top because they do want to secure his assets. Um, but CM Punk, honestly, it is what it is. I'm just looking forward to him fighting. So, um, And to answer your last question, what describes a good person and a bad one? A bad person is someone who is selfish, uh, self-serving, has a giant massive ego, thinks that everything is their idea, thinks that you know they're the center of attention, thinks that they're the center of the universe are willing to put others down, are willing to uh, miscommunicate with others and give other people, you know, the wrong advices, um, and someone who is just out for themselves. A good person is someone who is willing to look out for other people, uh, be, you know, selfless and look out look out after others, giving them the right advice, um, succeeding together, you know, not being selfish, not having a giant ego whatsoever, a person that is willing to help their community, a person that is willing to make money and make friends together, uh, a person that is willing to give up his own time to help others rather than, you know, spend their fucking days trying to, uh, you know, mask manipulate others like the bad person would. Um, I mean, there, there's a clear fine line on what makes a good person and a bad one. Um, but it also depends on how you are as a person, how you treat others, how you treat your friends, a part of strangers and stuff like that. It, it just it just masquerades. But for me, I, I, I believe those would be my definitions of what a good person is and what a bad person is. So anyways, Mr. Kyle, thank you for the questions, my friend, and I hope you have a wonderful week. And once again, everybody, thank you all for watching this episode of Fan Mail of the Week. I am going to go bundle up and eat because I am starving right now. I can fucking eat my Xbox right now. Holy shit. Anyways, if you guys are fans, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for all the latest news, information, and updates. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit it up with a like and a favor. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to submit your questions for next week's episode, everybody. I really hope you guys enjoy it. Check out my second channel at unreal enc network stay tuned for more everybody and on that note i am gonna go put on some fucking socks because i am freezing and i'm gonna go grab me like some fucking campbell's chicken noodle soup or something i'm fucking hungry anyways everybody stay tuned for more and i'll be seeing you all later take it easy everybody peace i'm gonna go get me some fucking soup man thank god